Oh, another edition of the Let's Go Ricky Roll podcast. Beth Duran, Ricky Romero, Josh Tolley. And it's a week after Thanksgiving. It's our first show of December, winding down the year. Uh, before we get to Ricky, Tolley, what's up with the gray, man? You're looking smooth. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of gray going, a lot of stress, a lot of stress in my life with these kids running around. You know that. <laughs> you should know that better than anybody. You've got older ones. Yeah, but Mike, it's like the podcast we started this year with you, you were clean, baby looking, like I'm ready to play. Now you look like the grizzled, like salty vet coach who's like been on the buses for 30 years. It's hunting it's also, season. It's also cold out there, man. They need that extra it, fur. <laughs> yeah, you need the extra fur. Yeah, that's true, Rick. You're dang right. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's great to be back. Yeah, we missed you totally. Uh, people always ask when uh, when you're going to be on the show, and it's become such a funny bit that uh, on Instagram when they see, send me a message like, oh, Tolly wasn't here. Was he on the roof? Uh, was he in a chimney? Was he hunting? Or was he with the old people? And I didn't understand the old people one, but I forgot you were at fantasy camp. Yeah, which was freaking <laughs> awesome. That was great. How Rick, great was that? Rick, you've done fantasy camp, right? We 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 did. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not being done anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I was part of uh, three of them, and they're they're fun, man. I mean, when you get you get to see the the fans, uh, fans who are big time fans who are pay, who pay to come to these events and play games. I mean, the the kicker is though, JT, you know this. Um, it, it's it really isn't easy because these dudes are playing like two games a day in cleats they're not used to doing that um you know and they're they're long games long days and shoot i mean it's it's tough for us to be in cleats for nine innings can you imagine guys who are not used to being in cleats for nine innings and, and they have to do it uh two times a day it's it's crazy <laughs> dude, these dudes play like 60 innings in a week no yeah. Yeah. and not I, I apologize not a week i had that wrong monday to friday yeah. what Oh, oh yeah. I thought it was just go for the weekend and you play a couple games and that's it. It gets oh, serious, shit. man. It's it's about rings. But these guys are like in their 40s and 50s, right? Some older. Yeah. Yeah. There's, we had a guy in the 70s. I I don't know. I, I'm going to have to get permission to show you this video. Or should I just show no. it to you? <laughs> no, no. no, no. It's, no. We'll get in trouble. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's just, it's one of the guys catching and it's hilarious. Oh, uh, no, don't it's do hilarious. that. <laughs> All right, I wouldn't do it. To him. We called him the skeleton. He was like seven, seventy years old, and just grinding it out back Wait, there. Was he was terrible. seventy and catching. Hey, yeah. Josh, did you guys have a training room? Isn't it funny yeah. as shit? To see every. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I I was actually going to try to snap a photo of the line, um, like the third morning. The line was from at, at the Mets complex was a whole row of lockers in line just to get onto a table. And then 30 minutes of work. Guys were getting there at like six to get treatment. Yeah. You've never uh, smelled more uh, icy hot Bengay, Tiger Bomb yeah. than, than these dudes put on, man. It's it, it, it's a grind. And again, they you can tell the first like two days they're super excited. It really hasn't really kicked in yet. And then by middle of the week, man, they're just. <laughs> hey, hey, how about the hot and cold tubs? You could not pay me to sit in those things. No, no, no chance. Oh, they do that too. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, and like they get, hey, they'll load them up. There'll be eight dudes at a time in those things. <laughs> they, it's pretty much they get a big league treatment. A little bit of the the a little bit of the of what it's like to be a big leaguer. You know, they get big league uniforms, uh, pretty nice spreads, um, and yeah, hot tub, cold tub, trainers, all that shit, man. They get it all, and they they, they, they get a little bit of a taste. Wait, is it Rick, is this one where you talk about where you go to dinner and you were like with George Bell and Barfield and all these guys talking? Yeah, yeah, Do the yeah. players get to hang out with you guys too? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, some of these some of these dudes are, and I'm sure Josh would would attest to this. Some of these dudes are like really really successful people in life. Oh. Like they come from like wealthy like business owners to like lawyers to like dude you you. You meet all kinds of people at those places, and actually, it's a good networking place where you get to um, network and and and, and, these, and strike friendships with these guys. So you do, and and um, it is interesting. I actually spoke with a guy last night for forty five minutes who was at fantasy camp, who's a retired NYPD guy, and 
I have to tell you, like, it, it seems crazy, but it was so awesome to like build those relationships. I was at Rockaway Beach uh, Friday, last week, Friday, and I was texting the guys and they all live close by. They're like, next time you come down into the city, let's, I'll take you out to dinner. We'll go do this. To yeah. me, that's the cool part of it is yeah. it honestly is networking. And listen, hey, we had freaking guys that were hedge fund guys. We had billionaires. We had freaking construction work. I mean, the, the list is successful guys doing a lot of yeah. successful things. It, it was it was really cool to see. Uh, and the passion, hell, the passion they have, Rick, is is insane. Hey, you know what? Now, while, while we're on this, you think we should just start a Blue Jays one? See if we can rent it out from Billy Warlord? Billy should, man. Warlord? <laughs> Billy Warlow. Yeah, Billy Warlow. Yeah, Billy Warlow. Uh, um, dude, it would be awesome. I mean, shoot. It, 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 I'm sure it's a lot of work. Um, I don't know what, what it would take, but it, 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 it is. Like, I've talked to a few people who are part of it with the, with the Blue Jays ones that I was a part of and they, and they miss it, man. They, they, they want to see how, how is it possible to bring it back? Um, but yeah. shoot, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start on that, but you know, again, <laughs> Beto it's, it, you know, these are successful people, but obviously it's not something that's pretty cheap. Yeah. I, I just think that what you're saying, cause see, I'm thinking I, I've heard of these fantasy camps before but i never would have thought but i didn't know you get a whole week and uniform and spread like that that's got to be at least five six grand or something like that hey yeah. no but the best part um i don't know how it was for josh but it's when you're sitting in the clubhouse with the with some of the old timers dude and they're just fucking yeah. going off on stories like so you know, when, for like our clubhouse was george bell um you know cito gaston Dwayne ward um just a bunch of old dudes and they're just going off telling stories about about their time you know and and it's it, it to me i just sat there quietly and just listened so yeah so we had a locker that was designated to joe boo which is where all the booze went so all the liquor all the liquor went into that into that locker and after every day we would sit around in a circle around the locker and same thing like listen to ron swoboda tell stories mookie wilson doc like it's, it's the same exact thing is sitting around telling stories. Next thing you know, you can you got in at four 30 in the afternoon from your last game and you're sitting there just hammering away, telling stories. And all of a sudden you realize you have a seven o'clock dinner. <laughs> we guys are like scurrying to shower and get out of there just to get to dinner. Right. That's the best part, man. Honestly, that's, that's the, the best. best. No, nothing beats that. And, and I, I, no. but though I shared some of this, not like, like, in detail what goes yeah. on but like you know just like the storytelling and the, uh, all, all that stuff that's that i mean you would agree too josh that's what you miss about being in uniform and i think that week yeah. uh, it gives you that like that passion back and um and being able to be around guys storytelling it, the the world of baseball is amazing and the stories that you're able to tell and and all the shit that i mean some of these dudes like played in the big leagues for 15, 20 years. And, and they yeah. have just so many stories and it just seems like they never forget, you know, they never forget where it fucking 1979 and 1978 type stories. And you're just like, what the hell, you know, 1980s and the nineties when the blue Jays were successful and all that. Um, Is that where you so, were with Fred McGriff? Uh, no, McGriff wasn't a part of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. The no, crime um, dog. But just being, a, it sounds like you guys, the players get, a lot out of it too, compared to just the campers, because you get that week of that camaraderie. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I probably got more out of it to be honest with you. Huh? I really did. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, yeah, it, it's 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 cool, man. It's cool. It's cool from the from being around a lot of successful people, and then being in front of uh, legends. You know that that you grew up watching or. You know, and 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 stuff like that. Like for me, George Bow is the first one that comes to mind, and he's just dude, he's funny as shit, and I fuck with him so much. And <laughs> it's just one of those things where, um, you know, we we to this day we still we always keep in touch, and he's always talking shit to me. And yeah, just a good dude. Just everything's cool, man. Everything about that week is cool. And shoot, Josh, if we're able to bring that back one day with the Jays, I would yep. be sick. That's what Derek, who's watching right now, says. Because you know, if the Jays fantasy camp will ever happen again, well, the who knows? Never say never. Yeah, I, I, I truly don't know. 
Um, you, well, you yeah. know, so the, like the Reds, for example, aren't affiliated with the Reds. They run it as the Reds camp. I'm sure there's some sort of revenue uh, stream for them or a split of some sort. But it's mm -hmm. a, done by an outside an outside entity. Does it? Huh. Like, for, how, I mean, hell, we could we could easily do that. All right, so there it is. The Josh totally experienced. We're gonna go to his uh, farm and we're gonna go hang out, and you're gonna have dorms inside the barn, and we'll be ready to go. Let's do that. And you guys will and you guys will never leave if you come up here. Yeah. Okay. You, God's you don't have country. You don't have God's tortillas. Country, There's baby. no tortillas up there, bro. I'm leaving quick. <laughs> yeah, we we have Las Chicas and Ernestos. It's good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, next week I'm coming in with my lunch, and you're gonna see the yeah. outstanding Mexican food that we have here. I, I don't okay. doubt it. Hey, because Mexicans are everywhere, man. I do not doubt that there's some good Mexican food up there. But you're telling guys are in LA. Re this past weekend, you would have loved it. Uh, we had the Ricky Romero second annual baseball camp in East Los Angeles, where Ricky grew up. And the most important thing, totally, was the fact that Ricky put in an order for tamales. Like I saw. The, the kids yeah. are there, all that other stuff. Once the tamale showed up, Ricky was a kid in a candy store. He's like, hell yeah. And I, I was mad, but the plan was they, they brought like pan dulce, which is like sweet bread from one of my favorite uh, uh, bread making uh, store in East LA. Uh, shout out to Razo, who, who did all that work. And he brought tamales from East LA. And the whole plan was that we were going to get there early, shoot the shit, eat, but um we didn't have keys to the to enter the the facility so there was no way of eating it so i felt a little bit rush in eating my shit so next time clean that shit up Beth. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's go yeah so clean it up hey it's our second annual we're, we're learning how to do this so give you guys the background of it of what's going on so uh in our group chat that we want totally to be involved with but he can't because he only answers every four days so that's why he's not in it's a bunch of guys that just go back and forth. And a few years ago, we said, Ricky always said, ah, it would be nice to do a camp in East LA where I grew up. And he's like, I don't know how it does. I don't know how to do this, all logistics. In our group chat, we have people who do everything. And I would say I'm the ringleader coordinating things because, you know, I talk to everybody. I'm like, you totally. It'd be like if you were trying to do a camp in uh, Owego, New York, right? Or in Illinois. You, you know people, you make things happen. So yeah, I said, let's go. We got the ball rolling. We did it a couple years ago at, at high school. Had no idea what we were doing. Successful. This year we did it again, and the gist behind it is uh, we take 50 kids from the East Los Angeles area where Ricky grew up, and they have to apply. They apply by giving us their GPA, and they write a paragraph why I should go to the camp. We don't ask the coaches, hey, send us your studs. We don't do any of that. Uh, we just have a requirement that you fill out the paperwork. You show your responsibility about that. And the committee goes and reads through it. Hey, I like this kid's answer. Um, and then some answers are not that good, so we get eliminated. We had over 100 kids apply. Totally, uh, you'll like this one. One of the uh, reasons that I should go, the paragraph said, because I'm a stud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it on, kid. Let's see what you got. Yeah, he didn't make the the process. I would say not. Yeah. I would say not. But on the flip side, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. The reason we're not in as much as we would like to, Beto, take 100 kids, it's just – the, the facilities, obviously, the capacity, um, all the restrictions that are going on right now, we, we just can't do it. Um, obviously, the goal of ours is to to make it grow to where maybe we turn it into a two day camp. But as of right now, obviously, a lot of a lot of kids are like, well, why didn't I get chosen or what what's going on or how can I get in? And it's like it's not really nothing against some of the kids. It's just. There's a capacity, and and that's why we weren't able to take every single one of them. Yeah, and also, oh, yeah. We're not, it's not like we're going and recruiting like the best kids in the area. It's yeah. more of give them an opportunity ex, 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 instruction. So we take kids that are in the varsity area. We we figure things out. We look through it, and we do a little research on them. So it's pretty cool, and we just want to get the kids that appreciate it. Because you know when you do something for free, totally. Sometimes people ask for a little bit too much, but every yeah. single kid there appreciated. Um, we also talk the responsibility is like, okay, here's when you apply. Here's the deadline. We started getting parents like, oh, my son applied late. Like, oh, sorry. You're out. You're like, out. Teach responsibility. And yeah. uh, we had an RSVP. You had an RSVP by a certain deadline. Some kids didn't RSVP. And because they didn't, we took other kids who did. So, yeah. and we, we explained to them the first hour, like the responsibility, what you have to do. Uh, it was cool. And uh, Ricky uh, brought a uh, Jordan Aboitis, who's a grad assistant at Long Beach State, who you play with in Tijuana. He runs the camp. It just, 
so many different moving pieces and it was so fluid totally it was like wow we really pulled this off uh let me give you guys a background before it and i work at cbs2 here in los angeles and i was able to bring out the cameras and this feature ran on channel 2 yesterday Former Major League pitcher Ricky Romero teamed up with current and former pros to host his second annual baseball camp last Sunday at East L.A. College, where 50 high school kids received free instruction. Here's a look back at the camp and how Romero brought it all together. It's always been a dream of mine to be able to do this. I didn't think it was possible but it all started in a group chat, and, and here we are. We're hosting our second annual camp. Uh, it's so far, it's, it's a great turnout, great weather. Coming back here it just brings a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. But I still remember coming here as a young kid. You know, my, my dad used to play Sunday League, and this place did not look like this. The community here doesn't have enough of uh, baseball support as it should have. I think the best part about this camp is that it's, one, it's free. Um, I've had tremendous I have tremendous friends that have been able to put this together. Pick up the pace. On the next one, we're going back pedal. Feels great, feels great giving back. Uh, you know, baseball's given me a lot, buddies with Ricky, so to be able to come back and give back is it's a great feeling always, to be able to do that through the sport, so it's good, it's good. Next one, next one, all right. It's the least I can do for, you know, kids that I want to set the example for the next generation of their youth. You know, for their kids to be able to come back and them come back and do the same thing. So when we were driving in here today, me and my little one, I remember coming out here growing up in West Covina, just brought back so many memories of at that age and a little bit younger of, okay, this is what I should be doing. Well, no one really gave me instructions when I was a kid their age. So just have someone pick their brain a little bit, being out here, if they have questions, I'm here, you know, just to be a role model to these kids. I can't stop smiling. You know, honestly, inside me, I, I have so many emotions. And I, I know what it's like to grow up in this in this area. You know, and, and, and nobody's gonna come here and pay $150 for one day. It's it's more just, hey, I want to inspire. That's it. And if I if I inspire, then I've done my job. Uh, Ricky Romero, such a great guy while he was playing ball, and it's good to see he's still doing big things in the community. Yeah, yeah. Love to see what they're doing. Absolutely. There it is. There it is. That's the feature I ran on CBS. is going to run again this Sunday. Uh, longer form uh, is actually going to be the hometown hero. Ricky's going to be nominated for that. Uh, All right. Yeah, so it's really cool. Love so that, that was the feature. So that was it, man. It's like little chills. I got to, like, it, it, you know, I, I helped bring the camera out there, and I actually interviewed Ricky about it. But just re-watching it, like, it's like chills, man. It's just so cool to be involved with something like that, man. You know, you know what's cool about it? it? It's it's obviously hosting that is amazing and, and seeing the kids face this. But, you know, some of these kids really, to be honest, Josh, <laughs> probably don't know who I am. But to see their faces when a Noe Ramirez walks in, when a Jesse Chavez walks in, when J.P. Crawford walks in, you can just tell the whole place is like, like you know, you picture yourself as a young kid and you, you meet a big leaguer for the first time. Like, yeah. you're so giddy and you're so happy and you can just tell he – he uh, when J.P. Crawford because he came in a little late, um, and and shout out to him for 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 coming out and helping us. Um, he you can just tell the whole place lit up even more. And uh, and one of the one of the cool stories about it is we were doing the pitching station, and uh, you know that uh, Alan Trejo from the Colorado Rockies and and J.P. Crawford were running the infield uh, area, and it was we were kind of winding down on the pitching area, and they were watching J.P. Uh, take ground balls and this kid goes he's like wow man like how does he make it look so easy <laughs> just the amazed like how amazed they were by by what by what these guys are able to do obviously you know and it, it, it's special and, and I turned around to the kid and I was like all he's doing is throwing the game down and he kind of looked at me like what I was like yeah that's all he's doing it looks fast, but I guarantee, like, you, he's talking as he's doing it. So, obviously, he's slowing it down. He's, like, saying, all right, this is how you do this. You're setting your feet. You grip, you do, you, you put your glove right here, and then you you you, you turn the double play. You, you feed it like this. And But the way he was doing it was so smooth. And, and these guys were just in awe of that. And, and that, to me, was, like, one of the memories that, that, that kind of pops into mind from this weekend. I, dude, I just can't. I, I So, I had followed it. Um, a little bit on on the Instagram and stuff, but it was it's amazing to me. I had no idea that it was the the format that you use, right? 150 applicants, 50 get picked. To me, I think that's what sets the standard because as I see, because I am I am in this youth space a little bit right now, 
And there are a lot of people out here for money grabs. Um, mm -hmm. So for you to be able to do that, number one, and number two, it's like the right guidance. And it's no knock on anybody else, but you know what it looks like. Shavi yeah. knows what it looks like. It like every that group has been there and done it. So yeah. you, you're giving them free advice, which which parents in today would pay an arm and a leg. You could go yeah. run another. You, you could go run another camp for the other hundred kids that didn't make it, or how many ever kids, and charge them fifty bucks, and you'll have five hundred applicants. Yeah. Like people will will do it, and and for you to to do it just to like pass as as Shavi said to like pass on to the next generation because that's we we've talked about it a thousand times on this show is that's what's missing in today's game is like we need to get back to the to the pastime of the game uh no, and I, I i think it's huge and honestly having uh coach uh george horton coach uh Ray <coughs> Bandler, who were the coaches mm -hmm. at Kelsey fullerton when i was there horton was the head guy and uh and hooky was the hitting coach and then eventually took over um having those two guys come out and talk uh you know they grew up in that area similar uh coach Horton coached at Cerritos Junior College which is which isn't too far um to have them come out and be supportive and, and shoot a bunch of ideas at me about how to make this grow um left me just like in awe and, and just thinking like okay what's our next move yeah. like as soon as this camp wrapped up i texted Beto, what's our next move how do we do this how do we get these guys exposure because the inner city right now josh honestly it's being forgotten they're they're really if if you're not paying top dollar to be in the top showcases in the country yeah you're screwed yeah. that pretty much you're, you, nobody's watching you and and these coaches uh Hookie and Horton were like, dude, there's a ton of D1 talent here, but it's impossible for us D1 coaches to come watch these guys during the week when we're in season. It's just not possible. So if you're not attending a top, a top uh, showcase, like the perfect game and all that other stuff, which costs so a couple thousand to go. Inner to. city kid, you know, does not know about a showcase. Who's going to pay? I don't know what it costs to go to those showcases. I don't uh, even want to. One day, uh, I think one day or one weekend, you get a, um, a show. I'm only because I know I'm dealing with this right now. Perfect game, I think, is seven ninety five or something like that to get yeah. your numbers and then play a game. Yep. seven ninety five. Yeah. dollars That's the entry fee. fee, not alone hotel and travel and everything yeah. else. Exactly uh, but right. It also uh, – so, yeah, you're right. Uh, we had this end – you know, you have instruction. Then some of these kids, I was walking around just taking pictures. And one of the kids like, is that all you guys do? All all we did totally was teach them fundamentals. It was you go to the infield, you learn fundamentals. Outfield, fundamentals. Hitting, fundamentals. It was no game, no – what kids are, are we going to hit? Like, no. Just take fundamentals. And I, I, J.P. Crawford said to one of the kids, we do this every day. Yeah. The cone, the drill, that's it. Basic fundamentals. And the kid's like, Really? <laughs> that's why I said, that's why I said at the end of my speech I was like if if you guys think this is boring this is what big leaguers do in spring training early work during season yeah. it just it never stops it just never stops and that's why these guys perfected at a level that you know you only yeah. see in the big leagues yeah. and, uh, and 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 that's why and 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 you can tell uh who said it best uh uh Jesse Chavez he came up to me and he's like you know what the best part is dude the best part about this is that none of these kids have egos. They're all so locked in on you when you're talking to them. Yeah. And I was like, bam, this, that, this uh -huh. is the type, that's the type of kids that I want. You know, I don't want kids yeah. that are like, oh, well, my coach came out and said, that, my coach said, you don't do it like that. Or no, that's not the way I do it. Like everyone was just like this, like just looking up, like, nah. <clears throat> Our, we got some good kids. Our, we got some real good kids because that's, was a, because that's because you vetted them. That's yeah. because you vetted them. Like that's just that's the nature of it. Yeah, and it, it wasn't like we said, okay, coach, you give me your best kids, give me your best guys. It was like, no, here, coaches, here's the applications. We didn't take anybody's consultation. Of like, like we had a couple. were like, hey, what about this kid? But like, he didn't apply. We're not going to put him in. They're like, oh, he's yeah. great. He could be one of the potential. It's like, well, if he didn't have the time to apply for us. Then we don't sorry. Have the time to apply. For, yeah, exactly. You know, so it, it's interesting. And, and to that model, and I've done this with the 10, my, my oldest son's travel team that I'm helping with is it started off as like eight players. Now all of a sudden everybody wants to play and we have 19 players. Right. Oh. And the model, the model is, is to take each, let's say a kid's a, a, a D player, make him a C player, 
make the C players a B player, B players an A player, A A plus players. And I think that's kind of like what you're doing is like you don't have to be a stud to come to this camp. Nope. We're going to get you better. And if you're a C player, we're going to get you. When you leave, you're going to have more knowledge and you're going to understand and you're going to be able to practice to get yourself to be a B player. Yeah, and yeah. I, that's that's the name of the game, dude, right now. That's, and that's, that's the one thing Coach Horton said in, in his speech. He said, go home. Go home or, you know, right after this camp is done, write down three, four, five things that you learn and that you want to perfect. And trust me, if you do that and you really shoot for those goals, you'll attain them. And then he obviously told some stories about what with me and and, and stuff like the, the 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 hills that I had to climb to get to where I was at at Cal State Fullerton. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 to me, the application cool. part is best, Josh, just because it, it one it teaches them a little bit of discipline and hey, if you want to go to college, this is the type of shit that you got to do. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm actually going to I'm going to steal that with some of my high school catchers that I do. I'm just going to make them do that. Just and maybe yeah. maybe maybe a winner gets um, a month of lessons free Nothing. just for doing it. This, yeah. dude, this is talking to Beto yesterday. We were texting back and forth. It has opened my eyes, and it's just like yeah, it's it's bigger than that, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. The, the cool thing is, it's a. Uh, Parents were there, and we talked to them also. The, so the first hour, they get instruction for our good friend, Dr. Hadigui, who used to work at USC. He's the one who tells the uh, athletes how to stay eligible, <clears throat> how to get into college. And these kids, totally, these kids were, the first hour was like, okay, who wants to go to play in college? All the hands go up. Who knows about financial aid and the NCAA clearinghouse? No hands go up. <laughs> and he's like, here's the paperwork. He hands out the paperwork. Here's how you guys fill this out. Here's how you do that. And it's just like, like one kid I talked to on the side was like, was like, dude, like, what do you want to do? He's like, oh, I have a, I, I want to be an engineer. I want to go to Wake Forest, Georgia Tech. And I'm like, hmm. I looked at his GPA because I looked it up. He has a 4.2. Grade wise, he can go there. Athletic wise, he's not there. And I even told him like, would you be willing to go somewhere smaller? Like, have you ever heard of Carnegie Mellon? Have you ever heard of like yeah. some other schools? He's like, no, no. I'm like, you ever heard of Caltech? He's like, yeah. Do they have baseball? I'm like, you. This kid wants to be a rocket scientist. Like. Like, use that there. Then he gave me the, yes. well, there's no money for financial aid. I'm like, dude, if you need something for college application, get, I'll give you the 80 bucks right now. Like, don't ever let yeah. anything stop you from going there. And that was yeah. part of what it is. And that, that's what makes it awesome, man. Yeah. That, and, and, like, again, these kids, I mean, I had a ton of kids asking questions and, and actually being interactive. And, and yeah. that's what you want out of this camp, you know. And I said, you know, look at all the talent that's behind me. Like, these guys are here for you guys. We're volunteering our time. We're not charging you any money. Ask ask away. Ask yeah. away. And and honestly, the, the team that, that we assembled this year was unreal, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, I still – I'm still in awe of everything that we accomplished. And I know I've gone back and forth with you, Beto. Um, yeah. And, and it, it, this is – I feel like this is only the beginning. We've oh, yeah. Making it expand a little bit more and 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 getting these kids some exposure, some, uh, you know, D one, uh, junior college, uh, NAIA, D two, whatever it is, but just getting them out of here and and it, I I just Coach Horton and Hookie were like um, amazed by one or two of the players. They're like, "Whoa, this guy can play for me if I was still coaching." And I'm like, "Shoot, like, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I need more, more. I need real, uh, like, these, yeah. these guys." I was like, I need these D1 schools here. Then if, if, if these guys are saying it, I need the D1 schools with eyes on this kid. Yeah. Like, so, so our plan is to obviously, um, you know, host some type of game and, 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 and kind of make it a bit of an event in LA and the community. So yeah. yep. let me let show me you, uh, you some skipper. Let me know if you need a skipper. Actually. Yeah, I do. we do. So we do. The, the totally the, the plan is now, dude, I swear. And people like, all right, I'm going to say this. Ah, the wives ain't watching. Look, the wives on, they hate the group chat because we're always on it laughing and throwing a bunch of bullshit, right? But the good thing came out of it, and now we're planning an all-star game in the works for it uh, after the high school season, the Ricky Romero East LA All-Star Classic, and Coach Horton and Vanderhook, the Cal State Fullerton Legends, are going to coach it, and we're going to try to get former players, guys who are around, to be the assistants, to help out, stuff like that. Um, you, we'll give you a team. Yeah. 
You, you just know what, tell me. I mean, I, I, I would, I would love to be part of something like that. I, I really would. It's, this is this is my passion. This is where we know this it. is where I have entrenched myself in the last twenty four months, yeah. and like I can't get my head out of it. Like yeah. it is something that watching these kids be left behind because of yeah. those things exactly. <clears throat> they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They're paying three yeah. grand for this league and five grand for this and seven grand for this. It's like it's tough. That's why, I mean, like it, when I when I when I heard coach say that about a specific player, I was like. Oh my God! Like we're we're doing a disservice now. Like we 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 got to get these these wheels going so that these guys yeah. get the exposure yeah. and not miss out on a opportunity of a yeah. lifetime. Uh, uh, I, I would see, say, I'm, I want to see big leaguers. Yeah, you know, out of that area. Yeah. I want to see them just go to college, man. If you have four point go to a, apply to Harvard, Yale, whatever. But uh, a, oh, yeah. I would say of those, maybe five kids play legit travel ball of the fifty we took. Uh, that are out there doing it. But let me show you some pictures, Tully. Uh, so if you look at the blue, those are all the campers. Everybody in red is a coach uh, that brought out there. Guys either played currently or former pros. Uh, here we can see Alan Trejo, uh, who's been on the podcast, Rockies, uh, played at San Diego State. So uh, pretty good dude. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ricky getting interviewed by me. So, you know, I had to throw myself in there a little bit. You know, why, why not? You know, a little bit. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Look at that set up right session. there. Nice little CBS. Little yep. J.P. Crawford, who uh, was just going to be there for a real quick. He was going to do maybe an hour. He stayed the entire time at the camp. Uh, as he said to me, this is really cool because it's not just a show and go. You're actually helping these kids, making an impact. Like, And I think – I love how uh, interactive – I mean, when you have two big leaguers running the – the infield station, dude. How right. doesn't get too much better than that? I mean, like, you got Alan on. on the on the left side, and you got JP on the right side, and they're just so interactive and and very. I went out because I was kind of floating around. I went up to that station, and and just how interactive they were with the kids was. Yeah. Dude, these these kids were. In, that's something that they'll, they'll take with themselves. Like they'll take that forever, you know, and 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 remember that moment and. It, and again, it's all about paying back. You know, yeah. I, I, we hope we see some successful kids, and one day they're able to say, like, man, because of JP Crawford, you know, at the Ricky Romero baseball camp, I was able to do this or accomplish this. So, yeah. all that good stuff. Uh, there you see Noe Ramirez, too, uh, um, out of uh, Ramona Gardens, uh, coming out and helping out. And he was very interactive, too. And, and dude, it, it honestly, there's so much gratitude and so much. Uh, happiness going all around and, and the way these guys went about their business and it's 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 freaking awesome like, uh, so who'd you work out with yesterday oh world series champion jesse chavez oh <laughs> my bad <laughs> you know, like, the best part, hey we did a we did a, a giveaway at the end totally and we we give a, bit, a bunch of prices uh jesse just left his glove there and said here you go um let's <laughs> somebody love. you know Come and, on. and, and everyone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, major, hey, major League Baseball would have loved to have that to raffle it off in their auction site. Uh, he's, like, right. he's like, here's my glove. Hey, guys. Yeah. Here, wow. He's like, he just laughed. He's like, hey, man. All right. I'll see you later, Rick. Thank you. Here, I'll, leave, I'll leave my glove here. You guys auction <clears> it off. Or we didn't even auction because we're not making money off it. We just raffled it off. Yeah. And I was like, <clears> all right. And I'm like, dude, <clears> I hope whoever wins this realizes that this is this is big league leather you just don't get this leather at, at a yeah. at chicks you know or, or dicks or yeah. whatever it is uh yeah, dicks, dicks, dicks. Dicks. Yeah. chicks used to be used to be remember that store Beth? yeah chicks yeah okay it's, it's dicks yeah, okay it's dicks. Yeah. <laughs> chicks sporting goods you don't have one yeah uh, uh, no anyway no, we dicks. have dicks sporting goods yeah <laughs> it was good yeah. and then uh we also uh so every kid, most everybody got something. Uh, we had raffles, a lot of cool different things. Uh, Blue Jays, great job by the Blue Jays. Sandy Bo Bichette, uh, Vladdy Guerrero, real memorabilia. We had a bunch of different cool things out there. Uh, we had a, a Johan Santana painting. We had one of those. You're an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Still waiting for it. Shout out to Albert Pujols. He sent a nice jersey. Yeah. With, uh, it's, I, saw, I always yeah. find it fascinating when these dudes are. Uh, Autograph a jersey and then they they write all their accolades on it like twelve time all star three thousand hits I'm like Jesus Christ this is crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. three thousand at bats yeah uh, totally what we got to get you a shirt and a hat we'll send it out to you uh for for Christmas a little stocking stuffer yeah 
So we'll send That'd that out. See if, yeah. there's, if there's any whiskey left, I'll take some of that too. Okay, yeah, well, we can send a little care package to you. Uh, <laughs> definitely do that. Bethel has all those connections, dude. You, yeah, whatever you want, it. whatever you need. The mayor. He's got you. Yeah. We got you. We got you. So that'll be it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That was a recap of the camp. So if you guys want more information, go to the Ricky Romero Baseball Camp uh, Instagram. Ricky Romero Baseball Camp is the Instagram that has everything. And, hey, our, our group chat, Ace of SoCal, showed up. Uh, he had he was there. Everybody was involved. He, he did a great job running the account. So everybody was behind it. And I kid you not totally, as Ricky is on the field giving instruction, we had a Ricky Romero Foundation board meeting inside the dugout <laughs> God, I kid you. Man, what is we created we created the ricky romero foundation board in the dugout we're like okay we have enough people here we have a quorum yeah somebody take minutes uh john who's one of ricky's uh friends that he golfs with is now running the paperwork to get the foundation going and nonprofit. he's like well i think somebody can charge I'm like, no no we want it all free john make it happen all free this is for for the kids for the kids yeah, for the kids yeah <laughs> Yeah, ain't nobody paying anything, including Ricky. Exactly. No, no, no. I will say this. I will say this. Ricky won't say it, but every single dollar spent on the camp this past weekend came out of Ricky's pocket. Um, we got we got some donations. Our good friend Ruben Polanco made a donation. Our senior Hernandez from Action Cleanup made a donation, but the rest of it was out of Ricky's pocket. And uh, I mean, we're not going to tell the kids that, but without it's also Rick what you did and it, the cool thing was also your family was there like your mom your dad uh, the kid oh your dad didn't show but he was probably at his own game but the kids were there and it's like seeing your mom's face Rick dude I don't oh, think yeah. you noticed it but man that was really yeah. cool too. Uh, it's yeah it's it's cool it's cool I I think again um what I did I lived it um you know at a level that was unbelievable out of that area um the odds were against me but I have a chance to to uh make these guys or make these kids believe that that it is possible and i think uh the coolest part was one of the coolest parts was what caesar ramos said at the end beto um he said hey guys you know because we went all around saying for the guys to say something and he said hey just remember we were in, all of us right here that are standing in red shirts were in your shoes at one point mm. and look at us we, we did it we made it and if, if we made it, it's possible for you guys to make it. And I thought that was freaking cool. Wow. You know, Caesar's not a man of many words. Mm -mm. He's pretty quiet and, you know, he keeps to himself. But when he said that, I was like, whoa, it, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And and we wish I, I remember meeting Caesar at a, at a Dodger Elite little showcase, you know, that they used to do for inner city kids. Um, and and. I wish when we were that age, we were having this type of stuff, you know, and um um so for him to say that and for those kids i feel like the whole like place kind of went a little quiet and yeah, they're yeah. like yeah and and jesse chavez followed up on that and he's like it's true we were all there we were all in those shoes at one point and we were wondering what was our next step and look at us now yeah so the, really cool all right let's move on through four as we wrap it up all right um there's some ridiculous money in baseball being thrown around totally if you're a pitcher right now Holy smokes! What are your Mets doing? I, I don't. I don't. Well, they're going to try to make a run for this thing. <laughs> I guess uh, the new ownership group has all the open uh, has the open checkbook. So I'm uh, I I'm not surprised by the money. I I do believe that there's a ploy with the new CBA coming down the pipe and uh, using it for leverage and negotiating tactics and all of that. But um, yeah, outrageous numbers. I mean, Jesus, what what, what Scherzer's deal was. What, 40, 45 or 44 or something? Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. What do you do? At, <laughs> at like 37 years old. Dude. 37. Or, or 36, whatever now, it is. Yeah, he's 30, yeah, he's probably 36. Yeah, he'll be he'll turn 37 during the season. So, but that's ridiculous the amount of money. I mean, we everybody yeah. always says it every single year. Oh, it's crazy the amount being thrown, but to a pitcher at that age. Yeah, but but listen, it, it, who you? I'd rather have the players get it than all the owners. Oh I mean, yeah, the owners without, without get paid. Yeah, I mean it, that, that's the thing is like that. This is always my argument, right? Is who is the entertainment, right? The players are the entertainment. They should get compensated fair, and fair is relative when you start talking about what the whole economics of baseball looks like, and the economics of baseball is ridiculous right now. I mean, hell, I. Honestly, a f four or five years ago, it was a 14, 13, 14 billion dollar industry. So just imagine what it is now, you know, yeah. so 
the the players deserve to be paid. 40, 43 is is a lot, but I, hey, I don't mind the short term deals. I mean, they're on the hook for one thirty. Yeah. They're on yeah. the hook for one thirty. If something happens to Max, you 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 eat you eat yeah. eighty. 86 million and move along with your yeah. life. So he is 37 years old. It's a three year mm-hmm. 130. Uh, here's the details of it 200,000 if he's the MVP, 200,000 if he wins the Cy Young, uh, if he wins a World Series MVP, another 150,000, all kinds of different bonuses. Uh, but he also gets four premium tickets to each home game. <laughs> like, really? I'm sure that was the kicker. Yeah, that's what really yeah. held it down, right? Yeah, that and the suite <laughs> on the road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but hey, good for you. Well, hey, but it, it, it's true what, what Josh is saying. Hey, I mean, good for if, you guys. Out, get it and 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 shoot. Who cares what anybody says? I, I like the, the 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 what the Jays have done too. I mean, they went. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> they they're spending some money. You know, um, they went and got uh, Kevin Gosman and obviously re-signed Barrios to a big time long term extension. So I think they see the future. They see what they have. Obviously, in in Vladdy, Bo. Hernandez and all the young cats on that team, uh, George Springer. So that's what you want, man. As a fan base, that's you want your team spending money and bringing guys in, and 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 you're trying you're trying to win. So uh, what I'm curious to see though, and I'm sure our LA friends are too, is what the Dodgers do because obviously Seager's leaving or Seager left and in a lucrative deal, and you just have to wonder what if if that you know. They, they've won for such a long time and they've been the dominant team in the NL West. You have to wonder if that window is slowly closing. <clears throat> if it's like, all right, we have to kind of restart everything. I know they're a rich team. They have a lot of money, but I wonder if if it's, you know, if. Hey, hey, you know, hey, I'm, hey. Daniel Hudson, bro. Daniel Hudson jerseys are coming. Well, <laughs> I, I, Rick, Rick I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. I, I do. I, I often think maybe the Yanks might peel back too a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. That, I mean, I, I now I, I've usually I, those I've are the teams teams that are the most aggressive, right? Every offseason. Oh, yeah. Like it's, it seems like they've kind of the, the one thing right. about the one thing about those those teams with kind of unlimited checkbooks is you notice how quiet they're being. They're kind of yeah. linked to like certain players. And I I believe you're right. It goes one of two ways. It goes their, their mindset is, okay, well, we've lost out on Scherzer. We've lost out on Seager. We've lost out on whoever else down the ways is do we peel back and kind of just take a deep breath for a year or two and reset our feet? Or are they being quiet because they're getting ready to make a bigger splash that nobody knows about? Because I mean, teams that – like one guy. this is – what's that? I said there's one guy that's the big prize right now, and that's Carlos Correa, yeah, obviously. Right. That's right, and it's like, is it a bidding war between the two of them? I don't know. I don't know that the Dodgers would ever sign him. I, I have no idea. They should. Kind of they yeah, they should. I mean, so much, Trevor, I kind of Story, <laughs> Trevor Story is another one that could fill the void in, in Los Angeles. Like, yeah. there, there are guys, there are premium players still out there. But I mean, I, I do like. Yeah, yeah. right. I, I I do like I do like the idea that that they are keeping it close to their vest. And they're not really tipping their hand because let me tell you, one team that gave didn't give a shit about tipping their hand was the Mets. They made it very clear <laughs> what they were doing, who they were doing it to, and when they were doing it. And yeah. I mean, it, I like the tactic it. Worked. The tactic worked because he could just write the he could he'll just outbid everybody, right? I like it. That, that works. But when you got to be strategic. You got to yeah. You can't just do that. You can't you can't show your hand right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Dude. What yeah. about Seager? I mean, we, to, Texas we, making moves. Seager? We, we've, seen it, we've seen it a little bit with the Padres, you know, in the past yeah. where they came out and they're like, everyone's like, whoa, look at the moves. Like, bam, you bring in Manny, you sign Tatis, you bring in all these top dogs, and then it just doesn't work out. Yeah, you know, I, I've been like, on teams where that doesn't work out. Like, you yeah. can't, you get too many superstars and egos in a room, it's a problem. Yeah. Right? And it's real. And mm-hmm. I, hey, wait, hey, I, I can't wait for the first conversation. Who's going to start opening day for the New York Mets? Jake Degrom <laughs> or Max Scherzer, right? Who? I, that's the conversation, me? and now it becomes me? a story. Now, Jacob Degrom, one hundred percent. It's not even yeah. a conversation. Oh, it's not even a conversation. No, it's not even a conversation. <clears throat> that is the conversation. That's going to be the conversation. Hey, what, I, it hasn't been yet. What about the Angels making moves? They got Lorenzen. <clears throat> they got Thor. 
Your boy Perry making some moves down there? Yeah, Perry. I, hey, watch this team win. I'm telling you. Perry's got a knack. Yeah, I love Perry. He's got a knack. He's got the, like, he's got a set to, like, ah, what the hell? Let's try it. See if it works. It's kind of yeah. Alex's mentality. And mm -hmm. it's, I watch so, it work. I did put in the request for Perry, Minnesota Angels GM, to come on the podcast. Uh, they said once things settle down during free agency, we can talk again. So yeah, let's, let's wait till the strike. We'll wait till the strike. They're, <laughs> they're in good oh, hands. The Let me see. They're they're in good hands. He's he's slowly. It's it, what the thing is that it, it doesn't happen overnight. As yeah. That team has a lot of money, like dead money. You know, a lot Oof. of dead money in certain guys that they invested yeah. in, and it just hasn't worked out. But. I think he's slowly going to add pieces here and there. And, 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 and I mean, yeah, it's going to be, it's, I don't think it's a year thing. It's, it's going to be a couple yeah. years maybe before he gets <clears> the <throat> guys support. in here and, and he gets what he wants. Yeah. So hot stove re reeking up. So uh, next week or <clears throat> we're going to do another podcast. And then after that, we're going to yeah. shut down for the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah. Josh, does Freddie Freeman sign with the Braves again? Ooh. Yes. Yes. That's that. That's the Alex power move, dude. He'll wait him out. Freddie's not going to sign today, right? He'll ride him out. He'll tell Freddie, "You love Atlanta. You've been here forever. You call me with the last number, and we do it." Like I guarantee you. Like in my mind, that's how that goes down. That's Alex. That's what Alex does. Alex is a, he's a master of that, and he's so good at it. And he has he has that skill to be able to call Freddie to say, "Freddie, listen, I know where you want to be. He won't lose him to LA." Because no. the Dodgers have money, I don't think he will. Dodgers need a first baseman. I don't. I don't think he will. That's my take. I, I really don't. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So, so housekeeping. December seventh is going to be our last podcast of the year. So next week, next uh, the Tuesday, we will have our last podcast of the year. Then after that. I got to shut down because I'm doing a bunch of different things running around So for the rest of the year. So then we'll be back after that start of the year. And hopefully we got some news for you guys about the growth of the podcast. Continue to grow. Keep on going with you. Uh, the numbers have been good, man. So thank you guys so much for the support and the sharing it all over the world, especially our friends in Newfoundland and in the UK who have been watching us. So appreciate you guys checking out as always. So uh, once again, thanks everybody. Hope that was the, the, the Ricky Romero Baseball Camp, the Green Eye Bandit, Caesar, uh, taking pictures for us. He's... He's, he's a great guy, great guy. But you know how there's always one thing wrong with somebody totally who's like super nice? There's always one thing wrong, right? Yeah. He has an Android. And when you have an Android phone, you just got to, mm, so. So you kicked him off the group text because it doesn't do the, it doesn't send it in blue? Oh, he's not even in the group chat because he has an Android. We won't, he won't even yeah. consider him. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> uh, hey, but shout out to him. He did a tremendous job um, with, with pictures and stuff like that. Again, everyone just volunteering yeah, their time um, on a Sunday morning and afternoon and, and stuff like that. I, I hope everyone yeah. enjoyed it. And thank you again to everyone involved. And yeah. we hope to continue to see it grow. So We're going to grow. Again. Totally. I'm not saying June 4th, but maybe June 4th, save the date. June 4th, save the date. <laughs> saved. I don't know what we're saving it for, but we'll just save the day, bro. Uh, we keep Let's on saving. Tony, what are you up to this week? What are you like? You hunting? You like shoveling nah, snow? I mean, no, nah, we got a little bit of snow out there, but I'll um, I'll do a little hunting maybe Saturday. A couple soccer games this weekend. We have a Hanukkah party tomorrow. Just... Dude, how cold are those soccer games? Well, they're indoor. Indoor. Oh, soft. oh, soft. Damn. Yeah, indoor. soft. So you're damn right. You can call me whatever you want. I'm soft. You are exactly right. Ricky, it was foggy this morning, man. It's a little cold. Yeah, it's a little cold. It's 70? Season, man. It's season. 70, it's yeah. God, I got my park on. I got my Woolridge pull-ups on. You guys have no idea. Hey, I'll, be in, I'll be in Toronto in two weeks, and I heard it's it's down in, like, the 20s right now. So Oh, it's freezing. Are you there? How long? Oh, all right. Well, that's all air topic. Maybe, maybe we uh, we jaunt across the border or something. <laughs> we jaunt. All right, a. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, next to uh, next Tuesday. So for Ricky Romero and Josh Tolley, go make sure you check out the Ricky Romero Baseball Camp uh, Instagram for all the information on what's going on with the camp. And look at the picture. So, see you guys. It's been a pleasure. Adios, everybody. Good job, boys. See you guys.